The question of whether or not to pay off your mortgage early has turned out to be surprisingly controversial. Some people praise the value of paying off the mortgage, while others say that early payoff is about the dumbest financial decision you could make. So who's right? Well, having done the analysis, I can tell you that if you're choosing one or the other without fully understanding it, you could be making a huge mistake. I'm the former chief financial officer of software companies with an MBA in finance and I'm a chartered financial analyst. In this video, I'll show you exactly how I'd make the decision. First, gather information about your finances. I created a free workbook that you can get at the link in the video's description to use at home to help you gather the information and then make the decision for yourself. So here's the process in four steps shown in the workbook in the order you fill it in, starting with step number one at the top. For this video, I've filled in sample information to illustrate what we're doing. Step one, put into the workbook how much money you earn after taxes, meaning your take-home pay, and all your expenses. Input your numbers wherever there is blue font and don't put anything in where there's black font because those are the formulas. By the way, if you prefer, you could just do all this on a piece of paper. It really doesn't matter. The workbook is just intended to make it faster. So using the workbook, put in monthly figures for everything and it will add them up for you to get the total monthly and yearly values of your income, expenses, and available cash flow. It's important to do this exercise so you know how much extra money you have available to pay off loans and your mortgage, and also to know how much your monthly expenses are, which you'll need to know in a few minutes in step four. Once you put in your earnings and expenses at the bottom, you can see your total monthly expenses and the amount of money you'll have available each month in free cash flow. If you're wondering what this has to do with the question of paying off your mortgage versus investing, hang tight, that's coming in a minute. Step two, add to the spreadsheet your major assets, meaning things you own that have resale value and your debts, amounts that you owe to someone else, usually a bank. Like with the income and expenses, I've included sample amounts in the workbook. For assets, include the market values of your house, your vehicles, and the value of your savings and investments. I separated savings into three buckets. Bucket one is for things like cash, CDs, and money market funds. Bucket two is for longer-term investments held in places other than retirement accounts, such as a brokerage account. And bucket three is for assets held in retirement accounts, like IRAs, 401ks, 403bs, things like that. Then add in your debts, include credit cards, school loans, personal loans, home equity loans, your mortgage, etc. Next to each one, write down the interest rate that each loan costs you and input the tax benefit you get, if any, that you'll get from deducting the interest paid on those loans from your taxes. We're including this because when there is a tax benefit, it lowers your after-tax cost of those loans. Your tax accountant can help you figure this out, but for the example in the spreadsheet, I've just input some simple tax assumptions. Honestly, this is kind of splitting hairs to worry about getting too precise on this. So for me, I just use a simple estimate that I included here when analyzing my own situation. Notice that because you included both your assets and debts, the workbook shows your net worth, which is assets minus debts. Step three, we're almost ready to decide whether to pay down the mortgage early. But first, and this is critical, you need to identify the return that you expect to earn on any investments that you might make if you choose to invest your extra cash instead of paying off your mortgage or other debts. The expected return is the interest rate that you reasonably expect to earn on your investments over time. Expected returns are different for every kind of investment. For example, right now in the United States, money market mutual funds, which are a common way to safely invest cash, yield about 4.7%, although every fund is different. On the other hand, the S&P 500 index is made up of 500 of the largest stocks in the United States and has historically returned a little over 10%, although that can vary a lot from year to year. So put in the types of investments that you would make if you invested and their expected returns. In the workbook, I included sample expected returns, but you should do your own research or talk to a financial advisor and use expected returns that you're comfortable using. Next, again, we have to factor in taxes. Remember, when you invest and make a profit, you have to pay taxes on the gain, which lowers the after-tax return. So like we did with our debts back in step two, input the tax costs that you will pay on your investment earnings. Again, I made some simple assumptions in the example in the spreadsheet, but your tax accountant can help you figure out the right numbers for you to use based on your tax situation if you want to get more accurate. Step four, with this information in hand, 
Now you're ready to start making informed decisions about whether to invest your extra money or pay down your mortgage early. I can't tell you what to do with your money, so this is not financial advice, but this is how I would think about it for me. I'd first think about my source of income, which for most people is a job. Is it safe and reliable, or is there a chance I could lose it? Many jobs, like government jobs or in teaching or healthcare, are historically pretty safe and unlikely to experience layoffs, but many others are less reliable. There are lots of reasons a person could lose their job, so be realistic. If your job is not very safe, then I'd definitely want an emergency fund. What I mean by that is I'd want savings in cash equal to at least three months of my average monthly expenses, and honestly, six months would be even better. That way, if I lost my job, I'd have savings available to pay my bills and mortgage while looking for a new job. Next, evaluate which loans, including your mortgage, to pay off and which to consider keeping. To do this, compare the after-tax interest costs of each of your loans, shown here in the workbook, to the after-tax expected return on your investments, shown here in the workbook. I'd pay off all of my loans that have an interest cost that's higher than the expected return on my investments. There's one more level to this, so let me explain. For simplicity, I'll show two approaches to doing this, but you're welcome to make your own choice once you get the idea. One, the first approach. If you want to be really conservative, you might assume that until your debts are paid off, any investment that you make would be in the safest asset, which in my example is the money market funds. This way, you can be certain that you have the money to pay the loan should you need it. Using the example numbers in the workbook, the after-tax return on money market funds is 3.3%. So my decision would be to pay off any loans that have a higher after-tax interest rate than the 3.3% that I would earn by investing. In other words, pay off loans that cost more than you will earn on your investments. Using my sample numbers, the 3.3% after-tax return that I would earn from investing in the money market is lower than the cost of every loan, so I'd pay off every loan rather than invest since investing is losing me money. Two, the second approach. If you want to be more aggressive, you might assume that until your debts are paid off, any investment that you make would be invested 50% in the money market fund and 50% in the S&P 500 index. Using my example numbers again in the workbook, the after-tax return on this 50-50 investment portfolio is 5.8%, which is lower than the cost of all the loans except for the mortgage. So I'd pay off all the loans except the mortgage. In this scenario, I'd keep the mortgage since it has a lower cost than what I expect to earn on my investment of that money, which means it's profitable for me to keep the mortgage. Kind of like a bank, I borrowed money at a lower interest rate and I loaned it out at a higher interest rate, with my profit being the difference between the rate I pay out on the mortgage versus the rate I receive on my investments. One last thing to think about. Some people are even more aggressive and compare the interest rate on their mortgage to the return that the S&P 500 index has earned in recent years, which has been extraordinarily high, and conclude that it's better to stay invested since that has worked so well the past 15 plus years. To anyone doing that though, I'd warn that this is making decisions using hindsight and the future may not be the same as the past. On occasion, even though it's rare, the economy and stock market crash hard. If that should happen, then the value of your stock investments could be down massively at the same time that you lose your job and can't sell your house except at a big discount. Think that can't happen? It happened big time in 2008 and 2009, taking years to recover. It's tempting to reach for extra return by stuffing every spare dollar into high return investments, but that will bite you hard if the economy turns bad. I'd recommend taking a more conservative approach, kind of like buying insurance. No one wants to pay for insurance, but we do it to protect ourselves in an emergency, and we're very glad we have it should that come. Last, step five. Consider the intangible value of not having a mortgage. It can be very freeing to have paid off your mortgage to not have that debt hanging over your head. For many people, even if their mortgage interest rate is slightly lower than the expected return from investing, it could be the right choice to pay off the mortgage rather than try to squeeze out some extra profit. The peace of mind could be worth it. If this video has been helpful, then you'll definitely want to watch this other video next to see some strategies for paying off your mortgage early. Over a million people have watched it so far, with many saying it's the best one they've seen on this topic. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one.